Thank you very much. So that leads us on to the next talk by uh, yeah. Professor Igawa again. He's going to talk to us beautifully leading on to uh, his talk on interdisciplinary comprehensive disaster training programs for all health professionals in Japan. Over to you again. Thank you. Okay. And uh, I have a co-author here, the Professor Sasaki and uh, Professor Ishii from Tohoku University and the Comprehensive and Interdisciplinary Disaster Training Program for the healthcare professionals in Japan. And we have no conflict. Uh, but the, this program was uh, funded by the Ministry of Education in Japan. So this is a concept of building back better. And, and uh, disaster risk reduction and building back better will minimize the damage when the disaster happens and uh, accelerates the recovery or the accelerate to the more resilient society. And the second disaster, even the second disaster hits, the damage will be minimized and the recovery will be quicker. But if it fails to uh, build it back better, the damage cannot be recovered freely and the second attack will uh, result in a severer damage. So that uh, after the Hanshin Nawaji earthquake, those disaster medical system was established and I told you about the disaster DMAT. But after 20, uh, 2011, the many other teams, including the disaster medical coordinator, disaster psychiatric assistance team, uh, DPAT, and the disaster he health emergency assistance team called DHEAT, and uh, Japan disaster rehabilitation assistance team, JRAT, and mother child health liaison, hemodialysis liaison, uh, it is because of the effect, tsunami affected area lost the power and water, so that we have to transport the patients who need hemodialysis to the distant area. And the standard disaster medical record uh, system. This is a disease surveillance system. And you can see the details by, re by reading the chapter. But uh, I'll, I'll, let me go to the, this program. This program was initiated by Tohoku University and the Fukushima Medical University. As you already are aware, the epicenter is here and the Ishinomaki is here, Sendai is here. Tohoku University is in Sendai and the Fukushima Medical University is in Fukushima City, in Fukushima Prefecture. And the nuclear power plant is here. So that you can understand how close we were from the epicenter and the nuclear power plant. And the Tohoku University experienced the support of local healthcare providers and the transportation of patients from affected area and mid and long term medical support for affected area. Uh, actually, the Tohoku University Hospital accepted more than 900 acute care patients, and among them, uh, 300 patients were administ ad ad admitted to our Tohoku University Hospital. And this university hospital played a role of a resource of human, human resource center. And uh, more than 1,500 medical doctors were dispatched to the affected area. And uh, this does not include the number of nurses, pharmacists, or laboratory technicians who were dispatched to the affected area too. And Fukushima Medical University responded to the nuclear power plant accident, evacuation and screening of exposure, mid and long term support of radiological disaster. And also, the 500 people were transported, and uh, 224 acute care patients were accepted into the Fukushima Medical University Hospital. And uh, in, within them, uh, 10 irradiated or contaminated patients were accepted into the Fukushima Nuclear, uh, Fukushima Medical University Hospital. And the program director, Dr. Professor uh, Tadashi Ishii, uh, was a surgeon at that time in the Ishinomaki Red Cross Hospital. And he, is a, he was a pre-assigned, and he is also now serving as a disaster medical coordinator in Miyagi Prefecture. And he organized and directed the medical and public health relief and uh, form an um, alliance in, in Ishinomaki area. And he managed the maximum, maximum uh, 328 evacuation centers 
300 evacuation centers in the affected area using sets of area and lines. And their duration was until September 30 in 2011. And uh, covering the Ishinomaki city and the next city, Higashima Tsushima city and Onagawa town. And the number of team involved was 955 evacuation centers covered 300 centers with 46,000 evacuees. And patient care was total 53,000. Maximum daily it was 1.8 thousand patients. So the Fukushima Medical University and Tohoku University collaborated with uh, our cooperation uh, with the IRIDIS, my institution, the International Research Institute of Disaster Science, uh, and created an active educational program based on the unprecedented experiences of the two universities. And we were establishing a sustainable educational program for the development of the health workforce who can effectively engage in the teams and in any phase, including the anticipation and preparation phase and in any type of disaster. So the uh, program out, uh, outlines are uh, described here, but I am going to the next slide, uh, the disaster. This is a basic course. I started since uh, effective since uh, 2019, and it is a compulsory program for every uh, participants. And the targets are doctors, and dentists, nurses, pharmacists, healthcare professionals, including the uh, paramedics uh, or emergency medical service teams, uh, staffs, and hospital staffs, insurance of uh, insurance, issuance of credit certification from Tohoku University and learners can register at the Miyagi Prefecture Disaster Medical Logistics Staff. Even uh, he or she is a medical doctor, he or she can serve as a medical logistics staff after finishing this course. So the there are two types of subjects, training subjects with actual uh, participation in the training situation and the lecture subjects. The training subjects include those CBRNE response training, experiential seminar to learn how to respond to disasters and uh, emergency radiation healthcare. So the CBRNE, you, 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 you know the chemical, biological, radioactive, or nuclear and explosion. CBR, CBRN response training is provided and the disaster healthcare coordination training uh, will do the learners uh, experience the actual healthcare and coordination support within the disaster medical, uh, public health and medical coordination headquarters. Those headquarters will be established when, the, when something happens in the prefectural office. So the disaster acute phase activity training, experiential a uh, seminar to learn first response skills in the event of a disaster at a large number of uh, or a large number of casualties. And disaster public health training, uh, modified seminar of humanitarian assistance uh, using the SOFIA standard and the training course in the disaster and area conducted by the quality and accountability network of Japan and acquisition of important knowledge about actual support and planning and learning about the specific national and local natural disaster cases from the perspective of health management of disaster affected people, uh, both in acute and chronic phase. And a disaster mental health care training. So experiential seminar using the DPAT and the disaster psychiatric assistance team training course and the PFA, the psychological first aid, anxiety response and psychological first aid in the event of a disaster. I, uh, let me go into the detail of the DPAT here. The DPAT is a very similar with DMAT. So that it is officially uh, registered to the Ministry of Health. So that this is specifically aiming for the support of psychiatric patients and psychiatric hospitals. But they provide some mental care of affected people or mental care of responders because they are professional psychiatrists. But many psychiatric hospitals have DPAT. 
and composed a psychiatrist and a nurse and a logistician, very similar with the DEMA, and equipped with self-standing materials and vehicles. And co they coordinate, DPAT coordinates with DEMA. And the DEMA, uh, they are using the special system, the Disaster Mental Health Information Support System, combined with uh, uh, EMIS. And another aspect is uh, uh, psychological first aid. The PFA can be used by everybody, not uh, for the health professionals, but everybody can use the psychological first aid. That is a humane supportive response to a fellow human being who is suffering and who may need support. And uh, it is teaching the do's and don'ts and uh, to, to look, to listen, and to think. <laughs> so uh, going back to this table, and uh, another type of uh, experiential seminar is the Disaster Pharmaceutical Affairs Training. It's a uh, principles of drug response in the uh, event of a disaster, pharmaceutical triage and collaboration between pharmacists and other patients, and logistic support training and the experiential seminar on logistic activities necessary in the event of a disaster, such as information management, which includes evacuation, shelter assessment, securing communication, etc. And this logistics is a very important and uh, widely, uh, th there is already a registration system or certification system for the disaster medical logistics chance. And the uh, lectures consist of these subjects, the disaster healthcare coordination seminar, which acquire the knowledge necessary for proper coordination at disaster medical uh, health and uh, medical headquarters. So uh, co how to coordinate and what do they need and who is a stakeholder to respond to that situation, kind of things will be teached. And the disaster public health seminar is the same one and the seminar on organizational uh, response during disaster. It is uh, learners to learn about the preparations during peacetime and which are carried out so that organizations such as hospitals can respond appropriately in the event of a disaster. So that uh, you might know that when something happens to you, it is difficult, it is not easy to get our help from outside. Disaster Dispatch Seminar, acquire knowledge and coordination skills necessary for support activities such as dispatching relief teams and DMATs from non-affected area to the affected areas in the event of a disaster. And the introduction of disaster science, Iridis is uh, teaching this subject and learning from the multiple perspectives on disaster science, such as science behind earthquakes and tsunamis, and uh, they can gain scientific knowledge related to the preparation and evacuation. And Disaster International Cooperation Seminar. Actually, I am teaching this and uh, acquire knowledge regarding international cooperation activities such as disaster relief and disaster prevention efforts in the event of a disaster overseas. Asia is an area of disaster. So disaster dentistry, and uh, some dentists are te teaching that about the role of dentists in the medical assistance during disasters or uh, the oral care, that they are also teaching about the victim identification using forensic dental techniques. So the second course is a graduate course, the master's course and doctoral course. And the PhD can be granted from Tohoku University Graduate School of Medicine and uh, on top of the basic training course, but they have to write a doctoral thesis. Of course, the master's program is the same. Uh, various professions can get the master co master degree, uh, which is, one of them is a master of public health and a master of medical science. So uh, finishing the necessary curriculum to, to get a degree, uh, but uh, on top of the basic course. And the third course, additional course, is a board certified uh, physician for public health and social medicine training course. And uh, for the administrative doctors, like head of health center, because health centers should play an important role in the 
uh, public health management in disaster so the uh, head or administrator of the health centers can get the board certification through this course. Okay, so the current achievement or commitment of various professions, you can see the number of dentists, nurses, pharmacists, radiologists, pharmacists, uh, or paramedics, or physiotherapists, and hospital staffs. A total of 44 people took these courses uh, this fiscal year of 2019 and 20. And two students for one for PhD and one for MPH. And public health and social, one uh, doctor entered in the course of uh, board certification. And this table shows the level of understanding and level of satisfaction of the participant, very high average. That's it. And take home messages. I already showed that currently the DMAT is working under this structure of the disaster medical system. And uh, they are continuously doing the, this type of uh, medical management drill because we are expecting a big earthquake and tsunami in near future. The, the multi, this, the picture is showing the just multiple discipline island. Uh, I, uh, these listed uh, teams are the various subject, including the hemodialysis liaison and home oxygen liaison. But the, this is a very big room. Uh, the other part is full of people working only for the medical and public health response, simulation and training. So they uh, collaborating with the uh, self-defense force and the police officers and firefighters. So this movie shows the simulation of the South Trough earthquake and tsunami. When something happens, only within a few minutes, the tsunami will arrive in the coastline of the Western Japan. And in somewhere like 20 meter, 30 meter height, of tsunami will attack. And as you can see, the, we are living on the ring of fire around the Pacific uh, coastline. And the, in Japan, the, like 20% of the whole of earthquakes will happen close to the area close to that Japan. And uh, within this circle, the population in this circle is counted of 56 million people. All population of Japan is 120 million people. And the expected number of death is maximum 323,000. Can you believe this? So uh, Tokyo is not safe at all. In winter time, something happened in Tokyo there will be a people uh, who cannot go back home. 6.5 uh, 6 million people cannot go back home because of the congestion, road condition, and the traffic stopped. So that uh, we should be prepared for various type of disasters and Education, our uh, centralization of the disaster risk reduction into the center of policies, not only in medical field, but also every type of clusters, people-centered cluster approach will be effective. So that this is what Sendai framework is for disaster risk reduction is saying. The disaster medical response required requires multidisciplinary cooperation and collaboration. Understanding the role of each member in the teams will facilitate the better response. And the standardized education is necessary for the scale up of medical and public health response. So the DMAT activity is the only tiny part of the whole Japan national disaster medical system. And they are supported by the standardized team education. Thank you very much. I think it's, and, ah, okay. I have to show this slide. <laughs>
Go Sorry. Ahead. Show the slide. Let me show the slide, uh, the final slide. I'll see you again in the uh, Warden meeting. The inaugural virtual forum will be held uh, May 14 and 15, 2020, this year. And uh, we will have an actual face-to-face -face meeting in Tokyo. I think uh, hopefully COVID-19 is settled down until this time, but the time is May 2 to 6, 2022 at the KO Plaza Hotel in Tokyo. The abstraction submission will open in July this year. So see you again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Igawa. Uh, we will look forward to that meeting in Tokyo for sure. I hope we'll be traveling again by then. A couple of questions from me and then we've got at least one from the audience. Um, that course you mentioned, the, the basic course, roughly how long is that? I mean, is that like a year or six months or short term? Uh, like, you know, uh, the participants are the actual practitioners of nurses, pharmacists, and uh, firefighters or uh, paramedics who is working daily. So mm -hmm. the only time available is a weekend like this symposium. So they, uh, it will take, uh, they can take two years. And because of this COVID-19, uh, they can take within 2.5 years or within three years, they will be certified as a uh, credit. So that uh, th these are the weekend courses. Okay, that's great. So, so they're, they're not mandatory at the moment for all staff, but um, I guess you would like to see, given the statistics you just showed us about the likelihood of a, a future event, I guess you would like to see this becoming almost compulsory training or mandatory training for everyone. Yeah, uh, but you know, uh, because of its interactivity for uh, uh, active learning system, uh, mm. it is not easy to provide the general uh, lecture like video lectures. So uh, it should be interactive and it takes time and money. And, uh, and these, these programs are aimed for the specific Health workforce development for the disaster medical response team. So they should and they should have the, some of their medical professional. But the, Tohoku University is providing disaster medical uh, lecture in every student in the medical and also school of nursing, so that uh, the part of disaster medicine can be a, a part of a common sense of the medical students. Well, that was precisely you, you. You're thinking exactly the same way, the same way as I am. That was precisely my next question. Was, I mean, for these medical and nursing students, we we've so far given them very little in terms of disaster training. We talk about emergency care, but but how much do you think a medical student say needs in their undergraduate curriculum to know about this? Is it just the basic structure of the response system, or more? Yeah, you know, uh, we don't remember everything we learned in the medical school, so that, uh, that we don't have to tell, uh, teach them everything. But uh, uh, we have to tell them about the disaster is a resource poor situation in which, in where the huge uh, volume of demand is occurring. So that uh, what will you do when something happens? That is a question, a very important key question for the medical students. And another, uh, there is a voluntary team uh, of the medical students who can help in the disaster drill in, of the hospital uh, so that uh, the, their active involvement will uh, stimulate them to learn about the disasters. And there are uh, disaster medical assistance students <laughs> Uh, no, no, Disaster Medical Association of Students, I think, mm -hmm. called DMAS uh, throughout Japan. So there are some branches in Tohoku area too. So, so they, are, they are enjoying the uh, campus life, uh, mm -hmm. participating in such kind of activities. It sounds like there's a lot of interest. The question from our audience member is uh, saying this is a great program. If we were to implement it in our country and, and particularly how could we um, 
extend this system, if I interpret the question correctly, to bystanders, to members of the public who would like to contribute to this kind of care? I suppose first responder type training. I mean, is that realistic um, in, in terms of being able to cascade that training down through the population? Uh, I think uh, it is not easy, but uh, the the media's news media's are frequently broadcasting that Japan DMAT is helping their response to the COVID nineteen, and uh, so that uh, and sometimes TV dramas are broadcasting uh, about the DMAT uh, TV drama, yeah. So that uh, the young people can watch that drama, so that uh, they can understand how the DMAT is acting uh, in time of disaster, local or broad areas. But the uh, the action of the bystanders are, are difficult, have a difficult legal problems. Of course, we have to provide some lectures of the uh, primary care, like ABC or uh, usage of the, uh, the CPR uh, devices. So that, uh, but the, in the actual disaster, the bystanders is the first responder, mm. the uh, injured people. So that uh, at least uh, basic education of the primary care, including the airway or calling the other people or calling the help uh, through the cell phone, kind of things can be educated to the general population so that they can play the good or how you can stop bleeding uh, can uh, help that person and uh, probably will make efficient responders to arrive. Yeah, I mean, as you said earlier, self-help is the first the first phase of care in any of these incidents. and. You know, coming back to your comment, I mean, I'm always, always staggered that we teach, you know, I have two 19-year-old boys and they can tell me how to do calculus and trigonometry, but they can't tell me what to do if someone has a, a bleeding wound or how to access the health service if, if someone gets unwell. We're, we're really very bad at teaching that basic health literacy to our young people. It is not easy at all. We see that in Hong Kong all the time, and it sounds like Japan's very similar. So thank you very much. Those were two excellent talks. Sure. And, uh, we're very grateful to have you here. We'll move on to our final speaker for the day. Thank okay. you.